Ahoj světe, vítá vás opět kanál Honzas Collection a v dnešním videu se podíváme na další ročník pražského Comic Conu, který se koná v Outu Univerzu a tahle ta obrovská řada lidí tam teďka postupně míří. Teďka jsme úplně na začátku třídenního programu, ve kterém mezi ty největší hvězdy bude zcela určitě patřit Anthony Daniels alias C3PO ze Star Wars a nebo taky Kevin Sorbo známý jako Hercules. Tentokrát dojde na fandomy, ať už komiksové, Harry Potterovské, anebo třeba uh, taky Star Wars a Star Trek a tak dále a tak dále, ale uh, to, co mi tady hlavně schází, tak jsou tak trošku jako ty hlavní komiksové fandomy, protože z těch filmových a seriálových hvězd tady není nikdo z Marvelu, což nedokážu pochopit na takové akci. A co se týče DC, tak tady jsou v uvozovkách jenom herci, kteří mají občas aspoň nějaké drobné štěky v těch dc seriálech, ale jsou to prostě vyloženě krátké epizodní role a to je všechno. Takže co se týče toho seznamu hostů, tak jsem z toho letos poměrně dost zklamaný, protože když tady nejsou takovéhle hvězdy, ale místo nich je tady třeba Jiřina Bohralová, tak to není za mě úplně dobrý, ale i přesto se na tento ročník extrémně těším, myslím si, že to bude super a tak jako ostatně každý rok a už aby to začalo, takže jdeme na to a tady máte nějaké střípky z toho prvního dne, ať si můžete udělat představu, jestli to stojí za návštěvu. No právě v tuto chvíli oficiálně startujeme, když pátý začíná. Hele, to je takový hezký číslo. A mě to třeba takové číslo teď je. Mě napadá. Ne, pěkné, já jsem to ale to se ke dnes moc nehodí. To nejenom, že se to nehodí, ale i strašný zpíváč. Sorry. 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 A tuto recenzi mi nedám ani pěkku. Já bych řekla, že tady mě pět let. Já myslím, že to je takový ideální čas na to podívat se z pět na to, co všechno jsme zažili. Šejč! Uh, can you please give like some uh, little bit quick uh, message to Comic Con since it's uh, celebrating fifth anniversary? Um, happy fifth anniversary! <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy to be here. This is way better than I expected. Amazing. All right. Absolutely, set of and one of the Uh, Andrej ten meziřádky nás budete znát, budete znát Lucifera, já pokusím velký aplaus pro Majka Genero! A teď za tím, kdo se dnes prosím Huge honor and privilege to be here. Very, very excited to see your city and to see this show. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Message for coming up? No message. No message? 
Can we go for a smoke? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we won't keep you long, so you can go. <laughs> Bye. že pracoval na tom Mexiku jako esasinský, Jusobor, Dark Souls a měl sex. Takže přátelé, velký potles, Marko Turini! I, I can also speak a bit Czech, but better not. Better, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, just like it will be then. I know also Nasranano. Nasranano. So thank you very much, all you cheeky buggers. Come and see us in Lava Chat, okay? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
for that. You're all invited to my room at the hotel later. With <laughs> <laughs> a few drinks and some laughs. So now we'll take questions one at a time. <laughs> uh, and, and this is my first time in Prague. Uh, I do not speak the language, but they did give me a cheat sheet so I can say ahoy. <laughs> I'm one now, and I'm ready to work for beer next. <laughs> Bebo. Bebo. 
There you go. <laughs> the good thing is, wine is vino, no matter where you go. <laughs> I'm good to stay here at least a week. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Takže naše velké věci se potí stále. Ano, bohužel, takže musíme malinko přeskočit. A v tuhle chvíli uh, asi tušíte, že červený to vlastně teďka měl být, tak je stále na focení. Pouze tam takový zájem, že vlastně, jako by, ne vy, ale ty fantastické věci, které taky prostě pustili. Já jsem dál jich dělal, že jsme. Já jsem zkaz. V tuhle chvíli tady já bych říkal takový jeden velký. Souhrný potles Ano, ano. Ano, ano. Ano, ano. Ano, ano. Ano, ano. Ano, ano. Ano, No jinak toho, co to přivítejte, Maška Pravdu a Pavla Renčína. To se neomrzí ani po páté. Tak já si musím udělat, já si... Když jsme si s Maškem vlastně před těma pěti lety povídali o tom, že bychom mohli udělat publiku, jsme vůbec netušili, o čem jdeme. Přišlo nám to jako plázivý nápad, než jsme se dostali k věru, mohli jsme se do toho vrnout a vůbec jsme netušili, o čem jdeme opravdu, protože ten první komik konečně provázal spousta pochy. Si se si pamatujete, že jste s námi takhle dlouho, tak část tam už nevěřila, že by se to bylo jiný, jak se uskuteční, že se nemám se brát vaše peníze. Ale jak proběhlo, to pro nás to byl veliký úspěch. Byli jsme nadšení, strašně nás to napadlo, že jsme dělali komiku my a teď na to přišel COVID. Takže další dva roky byla zavřená kultura, nám se podařilo nějak prosvědčovat mezi COVIDovými vlnami a odehráli jsme komiku dva, tím jsme vytvořili tradici, dokonce jsme zkusili i takový zvláštní komikon Hout, který měl být omajová verze komikonu, ale dobře jsme poznali, že komikon je v něčem úplně jiný, že to hlavně o tom osobní potkávání. No nechali jsme se odradit první další noci kráčkama, typu jak nám třeba na komikonu byl úplně první den před příletem dvě hlavní hvězdy napsali, že tu budou přiletět, protože mají problém s pasama. To by se tak překonalo, prostě tyhle věci se stávají, nevadí, přijeli potom do Prahy. Uh, Mně to přijde skoro nejvěřitelná cesta, strašně moc nám to změnilo život a podívejte se, je pátý rok, vy jste tady pořád s náma, takže jako vždycky na začátek já chci poděkovat především vám, protože kvůli vám a díky vám tohle věc děláme, takže zatleskejte si prosím, pořádně. Protože tohle jsou lidi z našeho ústředního organizačního týmu, přestože každý komikon je vlastně dílo desítek a vlastně stovek lidí. Tak tohle jsou lidi, kteří jsou tady s náma a celý je pět let, každý jeden z nich nikdo není nový, jsou tady od začátku a jsou tady pořád. Takže já prosím o veliký podles pro tuhle tu. Teďka mi dovolte, abych předal slovo nejkoholenějšímu, nejdůležitějšímu člověku z tohle, tohle baráku teďka, Vaškovi Pravdovi, který šéfuje celý můj programu, aby vám řekl něco o tom, co jsme si speciálně měli připravit na tenhle pátý ročník. Připravili jsme si pár zádrhelů, které jsme doufám uh, už překonali tím, že i dokonce tištěvou program myslíme na sálu. Uh, a překonali jsme spoustu dalších obtíží, které nevyplývaly z toho, že bychom prostě nějak musli hovořit někam, měli to za samozřejmě, že tady jsme. My jsme udělali strašnou spoustu změn, strašnou spoustu novinek. Ta hlavní je pochopitelně celý jedno patro programu navíc. My musíme hrozně moc poděkovat partnerům, 
A takže vlastně nám dali důvěru spousta nových partnerů, spousta nové zábavy, protože ty partnery my tady nezveme, aby tady prostě rozdávali letáky, ale zveme je, aby vás tady bavili. A to je zároveň naše podmínka pro kohokoliv, kdo vlastně s námi chce spolupracovat, že primárně jsme tady za zábavou a není tady cílem vyprodat nájemní plochu. K tomu se vždycky v porovnání s některými veletrhy firmy diví, ale prostě pro mě je klíčový, aby jste se vybavili, aby se bavili vlastně všichni v celém baráku na programu, ať už vydovené na dneska hodná. Tady ten koncept je hodně ojedinělý, protože vlastně na západě jsou ty kony hodně o otázka prvé merchandisingu, ještě víc zemců a ještě víc podepisování, fotografování. My se snažíme to vybalancovat tak, abychom stavili na těch základech těch minulých festivalů a konů, které se tady v České republice a Slovenské republice vyhrávaly. A pokračujeme vlastně v téhle krasnitě nejenom tady v Praze, ale chceme vás pozvat i do Brna, kde je Comic-Con Junior. Nenechte se prosím zmást názvem Junior, to jenom znamená, že to je mladší bratříček Comic-Con Prah a že jsou na něm vítány i děti a máme tam pro ně program a navíc k tomu programu pro vás, pro dospělé. A samozřejmě bych vás jako organizátor tří festivalů rád pozval i na festival Fantazie Rychlo Děvoře. Nebudu vám povídat o všech těch novinkách, které sami určitě poznáte a které si užijete, jenom prosím pěkně, jsme tady všichni fanoušci, budeme se mít rádi a nějakou tu frotičku a nějaký to tlačeníčko si tady vydržíme, abychom si to prostě užili v příjemné atmosféře jako vždycky. Jako do teďka. Takže užívejte, bavte se. Díky všem, užijte si to. Já teda nemám na sobě žádný krásný postup. Já jsem vyrazil z Mrzimorské koleje. Dostal jsem za mnou jednou užitečnou radu, že nesmím být takový, jako je obolská poezie. Třetí nejhorší poezie ve vesmíru. Takže já jsem vás přišel jako by dnes pozdravit, říct vám, že jsem moc rád, že tady můžu být s vámi, že pro nás. Je i komikon a protože jsem spojené určitě kultura, počítačové hry, fantasy, sci-fi, všechno dohromady, ale i my jako ministerstvo kultury už se snažíme na něčem na podpoře pracovat a vždy na budu určitě podpořit. Potvrdila, že počítačové hry jsou pro nás hodně důležité, protože to chceme v rámci velké smlouvy s návrhem pravdu počítačové hry podporovat. Dovolte mi, abych závěrem udělali poděkování, poděkování Václavu Pravidovi, který už odešel, který za tím vším stojí, takže velký potles pro Václavu Pravidovi. Je to velký potles na závěr, may the force be with you. letos opět, takže tradice bude zachována. Čili přivítejte obrovským potleskem primátora hlavního města Prahy, Bohuslava Svobodu. Je mi potěšení, že z toho v této podobě málo by se mi podařilo, abych se stal nezávislým všichni vědcem, který dokáže všechno, dokáže cestovat v dimenzích, který může takže je to pro mě ohromný moment vidět vás tady všechny, být před vámi jako někdo jiný a velmi si to, velmi si to užívám, protože to, co v životě má jednou za život, dvakrát za život, já si myslím, že Lava, lava, dada. 
Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so pleased to be with you. So pleased to be celebrating Comic Con's fifth birthday. Having recently celebrated my one thousandth birthday, I, mean, I know how it feels. Uh, but really, to be here with friends, to be here with people who know the Rima from the Rekla Shipi, Emily from the Gamora, the Luna Lazo, good from the librarian, Uk. Uh, I'm just very pleased to be here, so thank you, um, congratulations, and I hope everyone has a fantastic time. As Dr. Strange, it is great to be back here at Prague Comic Con, and I want to say a big thanks to my dear friend Matt, I mean Dr. Who, excuse me, and uh, really to all of you, the true heroes of uh, this event. Uh, thank you so much to the organizers, give you a big uh, warm applause to us. Thanks to all of you for your spirit, your belief in stories, and uh, being the guardians of the comics. Thank you so much. Have a great day and enjoy uh, the conference. Thank you. Thank you.
No, but basically the dubbing thing is the only link that I found between like Czech, Japan and, and UK. That we are the only the only countries that do like really full full dubbing thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also quite uh, quite crazy about the whole Ragnarok thing. So far that in the last Olympics, like the official commentator, like the public broadcaster TV, uh, referred to the Fiji athletes as Fusha. <laughs> 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 yes. There are even some, some beers, uh, you know, uh, like we had this uh, King of the Potato People beer, but that's sold, sold out. Is it sold out? As it should? Yeah. <laughs> it was very strong for some reason. But how many people here, for example, how many of you speak English? You know, if you did that in England, everyone said, how many of you speak Czech? No one <laughs> You see, what would strike me, the, the best idea that we would be to play in English and have subtitles. Because a lot of people seem to speak English. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but the, all those poor voiceover actors would go home <laughs> to feed their children. <laughs> all these starving voiceover actors just like, you know, like throwing us up on bridges. They can do something else in life. <laughs> When you see them, you'll see that there's nothing else that they can do. So, <laughs> like many boys in rap. <laughs> now those guys are really great. I really hope you get Oh, she's backpedaling now. <laughs> They're really great. No, but the funny thing is, we have another beer, uh, and the lovely guys who brewed it would really like to welcome you to taste it. Ooh. It's called the Female Old Walk. The Female Old Walk. Well, Old Walk. I don't know how to pronounce it because in the series you pronounce it old walk and Robert pronounced it Aardvark. It's it's Aardvark. I just probably got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's not unusual for me to get things wrong in the show. Well in scales it's uh Aardvark. Aardvark? I didn't say it's Pfizer, it's most likely Aardvark. <laughs> in Czech, it's Samice Hrabáče. What's he saying? Look at that strips off the tongue. <laughs> well, I hope you've got a trip on the track as well. I'm going to be able to do this on the track. Samice Hrabáče, final over. Oh! Well... Yeah. <laughs> a little taste now, I want me. A little sample. Yeah, and for some reason it tastes like banana split. <laughs> really? Oh, well, see. Did you ever have the show over here called the banana splits? Na 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 it actually looks like my piss after a really heavy night. You say, Nazdravi, in Czech. Say what you see. Nazdravi. Nazdravi. It's really quite nice. It is the normal way, though. Yeah, it's like they, they're called the crazy crown. I'm DJing crown. later on with this guy. <laughs> Well, thank you, man. Excuse me? <laughs> well, it's a bit early for me, of course, so... Uh, <laughs> I'll pray if you want to... It's almost 5, 5 p.m. Uh... Litany of students. How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Remember we spoke about Danny's entrances? <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> there's, there's this the standard one. Which is basically with a sort of um to pull up as smug a face as possible. And then up and five. Come on, come on. Let's learn this, you're not gonna be the better teacher there. There, and then fastest way down. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't hold it too long there. <laughs> before you start doing the twizzle. So start the twizzle as you are up, yeah? And then there's a quickie, which is... It's not much quickie, so it's three, really. And then if you're in deep, humiliating trouble, when you're facing Hollister, for example, 
Um, it's the up and then... <laughs> maybe start to sort of paint pictures, maybe do a bit of conducting, maybe, maybe sort of paint the, 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 this sort of thing. Always trying to keep a smug face. Can you punish me, please? I, I'm a good boy, really. I really am a good boy. Um, as long as it takes. And as Doug Lego was telling me, he said, Chris, yeah, do it, and then you'll get your laugh. And then do it, and then they'll start to sort of get bored with it. Keep going with it. Just keep going with it. And then keep going, because then you'll get another laugh again. And that's the point, maybe, to think about bringing it up. Bring it up. Up. It's all its way down. I hope you get that chance. in Dallas, uh, where you had a big secret when it comes to your character. Like, uh, you die, oh. <laughs> and then you came back. <laughs> so how how did you actually do the whole, you know, how did you kept it under wraps? Well, that was, uh, you know, this, it's a good segue in from the previous question, because by that time, there were, you know, and I'm sure you have them in every country in the world, but in, in the U.S., there was a, a, a magazine, a tabloid called The Inquirer, and it really set the standard, if you can call it setting the standard. It lowered the standard for journalism. To, you couldn't limbo under that standard that they were there. <clears throat> but we knew that they were operating, so we had to keep a secret how Bobby was coming back. Uh, the only people that knew the, the answer to that was myself and Leonard Katzman, the producer. And so we did two things. The first thing we did is we filmed, I think, three fake uh, reasons why, or ways that I came back from the dead. Uh, on set, with, you know, so that the crew, everybody was seeing what we were doing. Because you couldn't tell if maybe even one of the crew might. Uh, uh, the, the Inquirer was, uh, you know, and those tabloids were offering a lot of money for the scoop. So, you know, a lot of money is a lot of money to a lot of people. So we would get on the set, and I was in a hospital bed once with my face all wrapped up in bandages, and we, we filmed the whole scene with the doctor cutting off the bandages thing, and they hold up a mirror, and it's me under the bandages. And I look at the mirror, and I say something akin to, oh, this looks perfect, I'll never know. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we did one where uh, I'm talking to somebody, and we're explaining how um, how Miss Ellie had an illegitimate child, and it was like Bobby's twin doppelganger. <laughs> you know, but we just figured don't believe anything. But the reality was, what we did is Leonard Katzman uh, hired a, a production company outside of our show, outside of television, basically, that only filmed television commercials you know, for everything, dog food, all that kind of stuff. And he decided that he was going to film me doing a commercial for Irish Spring Soap. Now, I don't know if you have it here or not, but Irish Spring is a, a bar soap, and it's, it's really kind of cool. It's got green stripes in it and everything, and it's always advertised by somebody going, oh yeah, I'm not gonna use Irish Spring. <laughs> so we spent an entire day on a sound stage somewhere in Los Angeles with nobody that knew anything about me coming back on Dallas. And I filmed an entire day doing an Irish Spring commercial. When they built a little shower in the middle of this big room like this size, a little shower, hot water and everything, and a case of bars of Irish Spring soap. And I would do every scene that the door would open. And you know, you, if you ever watch the actual show Dallas and it, you see that shower scene, you never see her hand opening the door because it was a whole different you know, thing that we did. So the door would open, it was, the camera was on my back, water coming down, and I would turn around and go, good morning. <laughs> and I knew just how long, 109 knew just how long, good morning, be, be, and then it would be the freeze frame for the end of the episode, and everybody would go, what the hell, how's he alive in the shop? But what we really did was, good morning, and you can have a good morning too if you wake up like the Duffy family. It's spring so it's refreshing. It's you know, and I did it right the first time. It wasn't like it was Hamlet I was doing. So I did it right, but the, 
we both knew that the crew would smell a rat if we did it once and it was done. So we did spend the whole day doing that commercial. And we did stupid things like he would say, no, no, that we can't really see the Irish Spring written on the bar, we have to hold the iron book. Uh, but we did it, and it was a complete surprise. The person who was surprised the most was Victoria Principal, Pamela. Because in that scene where she wakes up, I hope, I hope I'm not telling you this for the first time, I hope it's not like that. She wakes up in bed, hears the shower running, goes into the bathroom, and does open the door herself. But in there is the man who played her husband for the entire year of his off the show. And it was, uh, his name was Mark. And, and she opens the doors and they have this conversation about business or whatever the hell it was all about. And that scene was supposed to be somewhere in the middle of the episode. So when Victoria was home watching it, and everybody knew that this episode is where I come back. So she was watching the show and she, the moment that her scene was supposed to be there, it wasn't there. So she thought, oh, I cut it. It was going long. I didn't need it to cut it. And at the very end, door opens. I turn around and say, good morning, freeze frame. Beat, two, three, my phone rang. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Victoria screaming. I just couldn't believe that they'd done that. So it was the best kept secret, I think, in Dallas, certainly, but in a lot of Hollywood history. This is going to sound like a broken record. Remember the name Leonard Katzman? <laughs> well, when I left Dallas that first time, when I left Dallas, Leonard, my dearest friend, my mentor, he had good friends named Bob Miller and Tom, Tom Miller and Bob Boyette, and they were producers of half hour television comedies. And Leonard had worked with, with Tom years ago, and they were good friends. So he, he called Tom when I knew I was leaving the show. And he's, he knew they did, were doing a lot of half-hour comedies. And he said, listen, uh, one of my actors, big actor in Dallas, is leaving the show. I think you should do a half-hour comedy with him. And Tom said, Larry Hagman's leaving Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> no, Patrick Duffy's leaving Dallas. And I said, but he's not funny. <laughs> and I said, but you should be with him. So I met with them and they decided to, to do a television show with me. It was not step by step at all, it was a totally different show. Uh, but then I went back on Dallas and they understood, yeah, you should go back on Dallas. So five years later, uh, Dallas is now known to be canceled. And as soon as the contract was over on, on Dallas, seven days later, I started working on Step by Step because Leonard Katzman had, had put me forward five years before that. And they, they remembered Leonard, they loved him, they trusted him. But what they had to do for the other producers that were writing the show, they sent the outtakes, the goof reels, the blooper reels of Dallas uh, to them to, to show that I wasn't just, God forbid, Bobby Ewing my whole life. So. Um, and those, those were how they looked at me and realized that, oh, he can be fun, and he can have a good time, and, and he's not afraid to embarrass himself, uh, which you have to be not afraid to embarrass yourself to do situation comedy. Uh, you have to find out how far down the rabbit hole of comedy you can go, and then they'll bring you back to where it can go on the air. You know? And so that, uh, in the course of my time, one of the more fortunate actors that I know in the business. Mad from Atlantis, I went directly to Dallas after two weeks. I was out of work two weeks. And then after Dallas, I went on Step by Step and I was out of work one week for that. So for the first 24 years of my career, I was only unemployed for three weeks, which you know is remarkable. And I, I wake up with such a sense of gratitude and appreciation every single day. But in large part, the first the first one was my own. The second two big jobs I had were Leonard Katzman jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I had never and then I, this is not a cop out. I never learned it. I couldn't learn it. When I would watch the credits, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> I was just like, what the hell? And I couldn't understand it. But 
I see another college graduates who will recognize me as Frank Lambert, and they'll sing the entire song. <laughs> the entire song. And so I can tell you that I do not know it, and I'm not lying. And I'm not singing. I can hum Dallas. <laughs> Uh, how was actually shooting that opening uh, opening scene for Step by Step when he went to the theme park? Like, well, first that was like probably one time when you actually went outside of the studio. Oh well, yeah, you didn't go outside hardly at all. The opening credits we did, but we did that before we started the show. So we literally didn't know who each other were in terms of understanding the characters. I mean, I knew I knew that there was a Dana, and I knew there was an Angela, and I knew there was this and uh, all of those characters, but I had no idea who they were. I had to be reminded which were my children. The producer said, oh, no, 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 she's your child. Oh, okay. He's my uh, so we went and filmed the, the opening credits uh, to our television show that lasted for seven years uh, in a theme park. And you see the ocean in the theme park? Well, it's not an ocean, it's one of the Great Lakes. But it's not, it's a parking lot of Magic Mountain outside of Los Angeles. And, um, so they had to put water, they just made that up, put that water in there as a special effect. But yeah, Suzanne and I literally were, hi, how are you doing? This looks like it's gonna be fun, do you think it's gonna run? Oh, I don't know, wait a minute, here comes the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to work on the show and realized that, I realized that Suzanne Summers became my Larry Hag. <laughs> she became my dearest friend. And again, literally up until she died just this last year. Yeah. Do you have champagne? Too? A tohle Ecto One, to je absolutní bomba. Nádherný kousek ze série Ghostbusters. Vypadá to naprosto fenomenálně. Stále platí, že bych si ho rád jednou buď koupil od Blitzway a k němu všechny figurky od Hot Toys, což by vyšlo šíleně draho, anebo aspoň v uvozovkách aspoň si ho složit, protože existuje i jako model v 1 k 8 a je to naprostá paráda. A k tomu je tady ještě ten taxík, rovněž z Ghostbusters. Vypadá to absolutně uchvatně. Už tady schází jenom Bill Murray. Nádherné kousky. Absolutní paráda. Ještě zkusím ze zadu. To je nádhera. Jedna z nejhezčích věcí, kterou tady na Comic-Conu můžete letos vidět. Každý rok tady dají vždycky nějaké pamětihodné auto. Letos to vyšlo na Ghostbusters a jsem za to určitě rád. Teď už je tady trošku méně lidí, než bylo odpoledne a než bude v sobotu, takže se podíváme aspoň na pár stánků. V zásadě skoro všechno zůstává při starém. Jestli jste tady byli na e, předchozích komikkonech, tak to určitě poznáte, že i tentokrát tady spousta z těch obchodů zůstává doslova na úplně těch stejných místech jako posledně. Takže v tomhle tom se nic moc nemění. Sice stále platí, že to hlavní tady je, ale přece jenom myslím si, že občas nějaké lehké oživení by nebylo od věci. Tady máme mimochodem ukázku, kousků od hostů, kteří tady letos jsou. Tady je samozřejmě fantastické komiks centrum, což není reklama, ale mohla by být. <laughs> Tady máme stánek pevnosti, ten je jeden z mála, který se přemístil proti Loňsku. 
A je tady samozřejmě strašně moc obchudku s Funko Popem. To je prostě úplně strašidelné. A vy si určitě, pokud jste pravidelní diváci, pamatujete, že Funko Pop není úplně tak moje oblíbená věc, takže proto se tím nebudeme příliš zdržovat. A půjdeme kouknout ještě kousek dál. Tady máme stánek XB1. A jsou tady i různé cizojazyčné, jak komiksy, tak knihy. V každém případě platí, že vzít si na Comic Con třeba 10 tisíc, když do toho započítáme i ty hosty, se kterými se můžete nebo chcete vyfotit, a tak, tak úplně asi nestačí, protože tady můžete utratit mnohem, mnohem víc a určitě za co. Na můj vkus je tady, aspoň z toho, co jsem zatím viděl, poměrně málo akčních figurek. A fakt Funko Pop tady naprosto dominuje, ale a pokud scháníte Hot Toys a podobně, tak to si radši zajděte do Comix Pointu. Tady najdete spíš ty levnější kousky a taky hlavně hodně anime, hodně Pokémonů a zaklínač Star Wars. Cokoliv vás napadne v podstatě, tak tady tak plus minus je. Tady je spousta plišáků, spousta obrazů. Tady je stane Gigzonu. Mimochodem slevy tady moc nemají, v zásadě ty ceny jsou stejné, jako když byste si to koupili na e-shopu, aspoň v tomhle případě, takže tady moc to nemá smysl nakupovat. Tady je stánek Harry Pottera a musím tady zvlášť zaostřit tady na tohle, protože to je naprostá paráda. Stejně jako v předchozích letech, i tentokrát si tady můžete pořídit různé zbraně ikonické, ať už torovo, kladivo, štít kapitána Ameriky, nějakou tu katanu, anebo v podstatě cokoliv vás napadne a co, co byste potřebovali. Určitě tady najdete i nějaké ty meče z One Piece, nebo dokonce tady mávající koťátka. Jestli mě paměť nešálí, tak stánek knih Dobrovský by tady měl být novinka, ale z toho, co jsem tam zatím měl možnost vidět, to nevypadá, že by tam bylo něco zásadního, co by nešlo sehnat jinde. Palm knihy si taky nevybavuju z loňského roku. A tady tenhle ten obchůdek je super pro všechny, kteří mají rádi plastové figurky z anime, což já nejsem ale uh, určitě je tady spoustu věcí na výběr, tak jenom tak jako nakoukneme lehce. Je tu toho fakt spousta. Můžete si koupit třeba i obraz z nějakého vašeho oblíbeného filmu. Nebo se tady vyfotit. A jeden z velmi pěkných stánků, kde mají spoustu hezkých věcí. A na to, že to jsou plastiáci, tak jako i tady, musím říct, že je tady spousta moc krásných sošek. Tak to je tenhle ten stánek. V neděli už tady toho asi moc nebude. Nakonec ještě tady pár dalších hader a Samozřejmě tady spousta mystery boxů, protože to je samozřejmě velký biznis, ale tomu se moc věnovat nechci, protože 
A víme všichni dobře, jak to s těma mystery boxama je a není to úplně věc, kterou bych chtěl lidem doporučovat, takže jo, tady, tady jsou třeba jedny taky, no. Má to tady skoro každý druhý obchod. A tady někdo bude asi zabit. <laughs> Nějaké ty kousky tady postrádám, chybí mi tu třeba ty krásné sošky od Iron Studios, ale možná, že tady někde v areálu jsou, jenom jsem ještě neprošel úplně všechno, takže musím se podívat úplně všude, tak tohle je jenom taková ochutnávka té, řekněme, hlavní části, hlavní prodejní plochy, ale my si postupně projdeme i další patra, ať už v tomhle videu, nebo případně v dalších dnech. And one of my favorites was one that Jason Momoa did to David over here. This is great. Um, he, he, Jason was out quite late one night, you know, and, uh, you know, and he came in in the morning before David's call time, and they, they shared a trailer right across from each other, and it was a hot, hot day, so he walks into David's trailer, turns the heat up in the trailer, uh, goes to David's washroom, takes care of business, number two. How does he like that thing? Just doesn't flush the toilet, turns the water off, leaves the lid open, and closes the trailer door. And then he tells me, and he goes to his trailer, and he starts playing his guitar. It's about two hours later. He shows up, you know, ready to roll. Oh, and he goes, James goes, here he comes. I'm like, okay. He walks over, I'm in my trailer on the other side. He walks over, I'm just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, opens the door and he goes, oh my God, it won't go away. It was in the curtains. <laughs> With him, I remember was, again, it's crazy, Jason. Um, driving home, my long day out in the woods somewhere, and I'm driving along, I got my little Toyota Echo, you know, and driving along, and I pull up the stoplight, and I hear this, giant thing comes by and sort of sits there idling beside me at the light. And I saw something out of the corner of my eye, I see something, I look over, and there's this huge bottom squished up against the glass. <laughs> and then beside it is Joe Flanagan's face going, <laughs> so forever in my mind, Jason's ass end and Joe Flanagan's face. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I think he just has a lot more people following him around now. I think he has an entourage. Back up. He's got a much larger trailer that folds out now. With, a, with like an awning on it. A little bit of jealousy. <laughs> no, I went to, I went to Jason's house one time in the city when he was up in the hills. And, you know, he, Jason's very much like he's on the show. He's the, he's the best. He's great. But he's very, you know, he, like he eats like he's like, you know, when he eats, he's like, you know. And just, so I go to his house and I said in the morning, he goes, you get out of the shower. I said, where's the shower? He goes, it's outside. I'm like, what? And he goes, it's outside, on the side of the house. Out, outside? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, the Scottish white guy, you know, I'm here and, and the shower, the hot day. And he goes, I go, where? I go shower? He goes, yeah, it's, it's out there. And you look at the mountains and you shower. I'm like, is there a curtain or anything? He's like, no, 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 you stand there. Just let it go, right? I'm like, all right, so I go out there and I'm in the shower and I'm just kind of, you know, I put it on, I'm like, you know, I, you know, get naked and I'm standing there and just looking at him, I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad, too bad. And he goes, and he's up there watching me. He's like, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> now, we could be happy, he honestly could be happy for him. He's killing it and it's great. And he's a great guy. He's, he's an excellent awesome. lot of money. Okay, speaking about great guys, um, I'm wondering if David uh, did 
Deep, <laughs> deep three the debit. Uh, on the set, in the same way like uh, like y y your character did with Zelenka. Let me answer that one. <laughs> yes. yes, he did. Yes, he did. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> uh, I'll answer that. You've done yet? Yeah. Out of all the characters in the show, David is the closest to his character. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that maybe answers my other question, because there was this uh, this episode when you meet those replicas, you know. Those yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, you actually were the only one really happy about having a chance, you know, to, to spend some time with yourself. And I was wondering, how do you think that you would be able Now I just need to break myself. The question is, how, how long do you think you would stand yourself as an actual companion? Uh, I would, why would you ever want to give up on that? I mean, that's simply an opportunity to like that. What a sad little man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to speak. No, yeah. Give a man enough rope and he will hang himself. <laughs> I think that probably this question is for the, the, the other two guys. Uh, how I'm happy not so great guys. <laughs> how happy you were when Rodney finally screwed up something in the show, like when he blew up that solar system. What was it? <laughs> I really think that's great, but finally, you know, he screws up something. Like, I don't think that was the only thing that he screwed no. up. So no. it's like fireplace. Just like he was making mistakes all the time. I was correcting them for him. That's why he never saw them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I agree with you. This is my moment now. <laughs> Oh, it's my turn. Yeah, the, big, the biggest screw up he had in front of, for my character is when he grabbed me and kissed me in the mouth. Oh, and that was, that. that was horrifying. I didn't like it. What? Yeah. He has, he has lips like sandpaper. <laughs> and he sent me flowers for months after. <laughs> Paul was just on the show. There's a reason David that that is sitting between us because I heard a string order over him. <laughs> But you didn't, you didn't seem to mind that much, you know, in the scene. You are not like actively defending. Right, I, I, I noticed that. No, but I was actively acting. <laughs> I noticed that. I'll pretend. I, I noticed that, that Paul sort of kind of loosened up a little bit after that. Well, uh, you said how the kids coming. Oh my god, I want to be <laughs> 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 uh, poprosím ještě vrátit tam zpátky ty možnosti. Pustit to ještě jednou a zastavit to na konci, tak abychom to viděli. Hmm. Well, uh, to say hello. It's for me. Ten volat, se hajdu do kids a nějaké dálky, když jsi takový. What did he might say? Number three. <laughs> a. I'm going with A. You're going with A? C. And the answer B. is... And the answer is B, B. actually, so you can see... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, overall for check. Okay, That's second, great. second chance to score. Prosím, do we put it? I don't know if you're going to get a lot of money. I'm going to get a lot of money. I'm going to get a lot of money. I'm going to get a Yes. Mm -hmm. How about you, David? Uh, B. B. <laughs> this is this is one of the moments when 
they had to change what he says actually, uh, because the, the John Shepard slide wouldn't make any sense, like my check is getting better, I now understand this. So they said, uh, I can't hear you back there, but I think I know what you mean. Uh, so that's that's what they did, and very last one, so last chance for you, Paul, to get a point. Yeah, Paul, come on, step out. Poprosím třetí klip. What did you touch? Yeah. <laughs> 